Good day, I am Pastor Curtis from the Greenville First United Methodist Church. Yesterday in our live stream for worship, we had a number of audio difficulties, so I wanted to share a word with you this morning. Uh, mostly just want to give a, a brief synopsis of what the sermon was yesterday, and then I have one announcement as well. Yesterday, we were finishing out a sermon series on the book of James. We were in chapter 5, verses 13 through 20, and it was on the power of prayer. Now, James uh, writes a lot throughout his book, and so it was interesting to me that James ends his book on prayer and how powerful it is, both in prayer is powerful and a powerful ending to his book. We talked about how James is blunt and uh, it has this list of things that he thinks that Christians should be doing and it aligns with scripture and we understand that these are things that we should be doing. And James comes at this from understanding how important it is uh, to believe in God and live in such a way that our belief can be seen in the way that we live. And so he writes this book explaining that, hey, these are the things that I see, and maybe if we write them down, we can actually do them and fulfill them. And so then we make it to James chapter 5, 13 through 20, and it seems to be an answer to this question that maybe you'd have if you'd read the entire book of James from beginning to end, and that question is, how can I do these things written in this book that I know are important without messing it all up? How can I be a Christian without messing it all up? How can I do these Christian things? How can I be and create Christian community? How can I not be a stumbling block and be a Christian without messing it all up? And James's answer is prayer. His answer is prayer in a number of ways, and I think we understand that prayer is powerful in some way, even though sometimes we don't move to prayer maybe as often as we should. We understand that prayer is powerful when we've found troubled times, whether it's sickness or disease or anxiety or depression. If we remember to pray in those times, we begin to understand that prayer is powerful. But James just doesn't keep it there. He says, if anybody here is troubled, pray. If anybody here is happy, pray. Sing praises and rejoice. If anybody is sick, go and gather the elders of the church and pray together. And so prayer also isn't a solitary activity. Even those times that we're praying alone in our house or wherever it is that we pray, we are praying for other people. And when we pray for other people, we are gathered together. And how beautiful that is. I like to, to think about it maybe this way. If you are truly praying for somebody, whether you agree with them or disagree with them or, or hope that you don't have that life or whatever it is, it puts us on this even playing field because after all isn't it hard to be mean to somebody or resent somebody if you are truly praying for them now i know that there are ways around this and jesus gets to it uh, in the gospels as well making sure that we have right prayer not to be like the pharisees on the street corners that just pray so that people can see them pray that's not the prayer we're talking about or not like the religious leader who is in the temple praying and, and basically saying, God, I know I'm a sinner, but at least I'm better than all of these other sinners. Not that type of prayer. The prayer that we humble ourselves before God and understand that, yes, we sin, but we believe in the grace and the power and the forgiveness and uh, really the saving grace that we have in Jesus Christ. The take-home point that we had on Sunday was essentially this. It, it shows up in the last two verses, and it's one of those go and make all disciples and, and bring people back into the church that have maybe left for whatever reason. 
And oftentimes we read passages like that and think that people have left the church because of sin so great. But I read that this week and began to wonder if it was just sin that drove us from the church. Would any of us be in the church at all? Because after all, we all have sin in our lives. So if it's sin that's leaving us or taking us out of the church, wouldn't none of us be in the church? And yeah, sadly, the answer is yes. And so I don't think it is our primary goal or objective or however you want to phrase it um, to go and tell everybody else about their sin. I think our primary goal and objective is to go out and remind people that even though they might not feel loved, they are loved by God and that God loves them and that there is this saving grace in Jesus Christ. And how can we do that? Through prayer, through praying with each other, whether it's through tough times or good times, and just having that life of prayer. I think the, the thing that adds upon all of that is praying that prayer changes us. Oftentimes we pray a, a prayer that uh, says for, for whatever reason or way, we are praying that God changes something. And yeah, God has that power, but we should also be praying that God changes us, allows us to see uh, what God is doing in our lives, even in these difficult times allows us at the end of a prayer to realize that, hey, we need to uh, reach out to other people, maybe specific people, maybe specific groups of people, or maybe to just get out of our prayer room and show people in the way that we act, that we have faith. And so here in just a second, we will pray, but I wanted to bring up one um, big announcement that we had in our, our worship service uh, yesterday. And it's this, that the Greenville First United Methodist Church and the Mulberry Grove United Methodist Church um, are going to work on a greater partnership. Um, we're going to, to start next year and, and to try to figure out a way that we can uh, more faithfully be in ministry together. And by July 1st, I will be the pastor at the Greenville First United Methodist Church and the Mulberry Grove United Methodist Church. So let us pray over all of this together as you begin your work week. Our gracious God, we thank you for the opportunities, the opportunities to have faith and to show our faith through um, our actions. Also, the ability to pray. Because it's pray, prayer that helps to grow our relationship, not only with you, but with one another as we pray for one another. Both in times of sickness and trouble and in times of happiness and rejoicing. So bless us this week in whatever we do. In your gracious name we pray. Amen.